Well, still on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa, and thanks for joining us. We have a Zika Yai took who will be part of the conversation on Off the Press. Uh, he's an architect, and we like to call him the Otwe Kong. Zika Yai took is good to have you join us this morning. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be with you. All right, then. Let's start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. On the Punch, uh, you know, the PDP might just be dominating maybe uh, all of the headlines but let's see how that happens but on the punch punch is saying that the pdp crisis peace is threatened and we care articles men disagree over are you don't forget that you know we had said for us to actually move forward are you has to resign as a chairman of the party and that's because you can't have uh, you know, Sardin candidate or the presence of a Sardin are not being represented. I mean, you can't have enough, enough, not all through the entire, you know, space. Underneath, IU must go for talks to proceed. Governor's men quoted to say, IU won't resign, says PDP team. It seems devil has entered the PDP, says George, as negotiators disagree over venue. No, the devil has not entered. Go to your village or villages, election are not won in Abuja hotels, Wiki tells candidate. Uh, that's uh, something to think about. Electricity workers call off strike and businesses count losses. This is a different caption, uh, you know, to the left top corner on the paper of uh, the punch this morning. And uh, underneath, Gents calls and discourse all banks, 836 billion naira amid crisis. Away from that caption, uh, more interesting headlines on the punch. $418 million refund, governors knock Malami over commission. Women not created to be irrelevant. First female Methodist bishop is quoted to say, I mean, with her attire. Uh, there's a picture of attire right there. How transitional firms swindle Nigerians. Hmm. I take that again. How transnational firms swindle Nigerians. One would think that Nigerians are the most, I mean, you want to talk about uh, very smart persons on earth you call Nigerians. Nobody should think that a Nigerian should fall for some kind of scheme, right? Or be swindled. But, you know, the punch is saying that uh, transnational firms swindle Nigerians, orders over $3 million. And you also have APC supporters hold carnival as Tinubu visit uh, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Olushagun Basandro, in his hometown, Abiyokuta. And ASU begins consultation on next move. Great grandma collapses and dies while climbing Lagos Bridge. And nothing huge protests insecurity in Abuja. This is some of the interesting headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. But we have all the papers. Uh, we take a quick look at the nation. Governors hit Malami on $418 million Pari Club payment. AGF's action, self-serving, we will pursue matters to Supreme Court. These are riders underneath it. I'm sure the governors are not really having having it really nice. But don't you think that it's a system that we have created? You know, they're very used to uh, getting all of this. The federal government, why we failed to meet 5,000 megawatts targets. Really? Uh, so it's a conversation that I've had, and I'm sure that we've talked about this. If we look at the country of a, a 200 plus 211 million persons, according to the UN, then we have the capacity with the plants that we have, a capacity to generate 12,000 megawatts, but we're not even able to produce up to 5,000 megawatts. Really, does it make any sense? The PDP taken over by the devil, says Buddy George. Interesting. And uh, Bauer, EFCC, secure 4,430 convictions in 19 months. Lagos Blue Rail Line to begin test run in December. That's what you find. And just before we move away from the nation, you have 2023. Tunubu V said Obasanjo V uh, Amid Pump. Uh, it's boldly written on the nation. I'll quickly look at uh, the Guardian newspaper this morning. 
nationwide blackout, three billion naira loss to TCN strike as greed crashes. And that's why it's reported that, you know, uh, the TCN is owing the banks and all the investors or the business persons. Electricity workers suspend industrial action. This cause issue notice on darkness and urges communities to safeguard installation. Why we can't generate 5,000 megawatts of power by the minister? Uh, I'm sure that the issue of vandalism will be quoted. Restructuring won't lead to cessation, says Okotie. EFCC raid on BDC operators behind Naira raised uh, against dollar, says Bauer. And again, Rivers women protest against destruction of farmlands by suspected headers. That's what you find. Uh, some of the headlines. Eight years after leading Buhari to Obasanjo, Tunubu meets ex-president for his own ambition. Well, we'll move away for the want of time. We have the Daily Trust newspaper also. And the 2023 elections, you have e-transmission of election result has come to stay. That's what INEC has quoted to say. 27 by-elections pending. What we learned from Kenya presidential poll, INEC is saying, debate's good for democracy. Uh, it's not about what you learn. It's about what you do or what you learn. So the issue has always been with humans on the earth including those who are calling the affairs implementation of what we know. ESWAP abducts six farmers in Borno and demands five million naira. NNPP backs media trust in 2023 elections debate. Troops dislodge bandits, cam, and rescue babies, six female hostage in Kaduna. Again, you have power outages, TCN workers strike, crashes electricity, greed. Okay. So it's one wahala to another one. Uh, still looking at the Daily Trust newspaper. $418 million Pari Club reform. Governors tackle Malamise action fraudulent and self-serving. Why uh, Shakarao's associate failed to secure NNPP's ticket. Kwankwaso is quoted to say. Nijay. Bennett, Togo, O, Nigeria, 5.8 billion naira for power in 2020. Uh, this is a report. I mean, this is not new because this has been going on. And you ask yourself, because we're actually supplying power, <laughs> let's not even talk about it. I can't wait to hear Ezekiel Nyai talk's thoughts on this particular issue. But that's the size of it on the Daily Trust newspaper uh, this morning. Ezekiel Nyai took once again, we appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for being with us. Oh, good morning for the privilege and thanks for having me. All right. Then. I was okay, so I, I like to start off with the Punch newspaper. Let's look at the politics and, and all of the politics that's going on. Uh, with the PDP, the crisis, uh, the disagreement. Uh, but, you know, the Punch says that the peace has been threatened because Wiki and Atiku's men disagree over Ayu. And the issue here is Ayu has to resign. And the other party is saying Ayu will not resign. This is where they are. But what do you make of this as an opposition party, really? <laughs> I, I think um, I wish I could talk as an opposition party. Uh, but let me say that um, I'm starting to, to believe that there's something about age. Uh, it started with my mother. I had the most strict mother anybody could have. That's why... There are many things I've never smoked. I've never taken alcohol. I did had a bottle of beer in my life. And it all goes back to my mother because even when I was schooling far away from her, uh, the thought that I wanted to break bounds or this, I said, a kite will kill me, you know? Now, why am I saying? Then when I had children, this same mother that was Margaret Thatcher, my child would do something. I want to spank. He said, no, no, no. I'm coming here to him. You know, he's a small child. I'm like, was I not a small child? There's something about age. Why I'm saying this is that there's something going on with Atiku that I, I, I can't quite understand. It's not the Atiku I know. The Atiku I know is, 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 uh, uh, is so politically savvy. He, he's so, he, he sees the future and, and takes a step before he meets. One, two, three things have happened that I really can't understand what's happening to him. Maybe age has come on him. 
The first is after the primaries, the ITQ I knew will be the first to break all protocols and go to Wike because he would have done his political strategizing to know the power blocks where they land. And in the equation of, 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 of PDP politics, the one man above any other PDP member that you could never dismiss with a wave of the hand is Mr. Wike. You can't. And yet, for reasons I can't understand, he just let it linger, 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 and so much has gone, you know, it has gone almost irreversible. That on one hand. Secondly, the article that I know will not be humoring the national chairman where the two of them come from the same zone. He would have called this guy long before now and said, you know, you are a man of integrity. You had said that if this happens is what you would do. People know you for who you are. Do not come and demystify yourself now. You've got to tell me who you would want to succeed you from this zone or that zone. And would have solved this problem long before today. And see what's going on. And that makes me really wonder if the article that we knew is the article that we are seeing today with respect to taking decisive decisions, being extremely, you know, future looking like the sons of Issachar, you know, understanding the signs of the times and taking decisions before they reach us, which is what you need for the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I think that age is happening to Atiku. That's my personal thought. And if that be the case, it also brings my reservation on the person of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So I think that Nigerians should really sit down and subject these two people to what I may call forensic tests as to their capacity to take prompt decision, preemptive decisions in a time like this where we need a general that will lead from the front, not because he... Oh, well, uh, we seem to have uh, some disconnection and network issues. But I'm hoping that Ezekiel Nyaito joins the conversation because a uh, very interesting perspective that he's raising or has raised right there. And I hope that he comes back to talk about it because it's a rift that's going on in, in the PDP. And if you, you know, look at the times, one would say that, yes, that's a big, an opposition party, a party that has been in governance and in governance for over, uh, you know, some time. And uh, the expectation would be that the acts, they would have it together. All of this should not have been seen. It's a time where they're very serious about because you know that the house that's divided against itself cannot even stand. And so uh, let's even hope that Ezekiel Nyaitik uh, comes through with his thoughts on that particular one. But there are also more interesting headlines. We'll just uh, maybe quickly take this break and when we return, Ezekiel continues with his thoughts. Stay with us. We're still on the breakfast right here. We we'll apologize for, for that particular break, but Ezekiel Yanitek is still with us. And uh, Ezekiel, I like that you continue with your thoughts. You were talking about, you know, the PDP and the crisis that's going on. But quickly, uh, just as you continue, but they judge of the thoughts that the devil has entered the PDP. Do you think that that's the case here? <laughs> well, first, I think that um, the enemies of progress, the opposition, didn't want me to continue <laughs> because what just happened is not explainable. Anyway, back to it. You see, we really need to be careful and not just um, follow the, the conversations, but be very intentional and focused having our eyes on the ball. The eyes on the ball is ensuring that we are not where we are today a year from 2023 where we start to regret we have all the possibilities to interrogate every person that wants to be president or governor those two to start with because the others seem to like report to these two and you have to look at the mental capacity of that person you have to look at the physical fitness of that person. And when I talk of mental capacity and physical fitness, sometimes it goes beyond age. 
Because you can have a young child of 50 or a, child, a man of 50 that has destroyed his future and he can't even think straight again. On the other hand, you can have somebody of 65 that is still sharp. I'm just next year, I'll be 60. And I think all my faculties are working real good, I would say so, and probably because of the foundation I've led coming to court. But the point is this. Those who want to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we need to stay, the time is not as long as we, 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 we think it is, to really interrogate their state of mind. We need to take real sharp decisions, decisive decisions, informed decisions. Every problem that we have in Nigeria can be traced to the fact that we have people in government who do not understand the basic essence. It's not how long you've been in government. No. You know, there, let me just throw this in very quickly. There was an interview I granted uh, to The Guardian you know, long time ago. It was a major interview I, I granted. And they made one mistake that just changed everything. I insist on my interviews being recorded and transcribed. And when the person was transcribing, I said, you need a person that has what they wrote, elephant experience. Now, that made a whole complete change to what I was saying. What I actually said was relevant experience and not elephant experience because people think of humongous large experience and all those things are like things that don't make it we need really a, an arm robber has experience bureaucratic nonsense that has kept us where we are here is experience in bureaucracy but what sort of experience do we need do we need the experience of a monarch that must be worshipped that is a lord or the experience of a CEO that must take informed decisions and knows the processes, one who has the capacity to squeeze water out of the rock, because for where we are now, we are fooling the nation, we are lying to the nation, our resources are very low, our test is very high, you need somebody that understands the balance between these two, we, we break contracts, we have no respect for, for, for contracts, we have none, and we are expecting direct foreign investment. We are not secured our borders and our internal security, and we are expecting direct foreign, foreign uh, uh, direct uh, FDI, foreign direct investment. These are the fundamentals that whoever wants to be a leader must understand, either at the governorship level or at the presidency level, and not the paraphernalia of office and, you know, you know, going in for yourself, pre bendalism and all that. It has to be sacrifice. It has to be service. How can you serve when you do not have the capacity? They are saying things at November 1 of the 59. They are saying things I cannot want to do now. Okay. I used to like football. I can't imagine myself on the pitch of play because but, but no matter how much I had then, it's too late now. But, but you can still be on the other side where you're, uh, you know, watching. Yeah, yeah, Spectator. that's it. They should be spectators. <laughs> they should be. They can even be coaches, okay? Right. And they can be guardians. They can be advisors. But please leave the pitch alone. Your time don't pass. You don't inspire. Mm. Okay. Well, we hope that uh, you know those who should heed to this saying are listening. And uh, even if they're not listening, I'm sure that uh, somehow the message should get to them. But on the other hand, uh, I'd like you to also re react to this. Do you think that the devil is in the PDP right now? Because uh, it's, a, it's a thought of Buddy George. I'd like you to quickly share your thoughts. Is it the, the case devil, of the devil? The devil is not just in. The devil are taking control of PDP and APC. <laughs> That's why Nigerians are unanimous. They say no APC, no PDP. And Nigerians love God. So they know that the devil must be on the other side. That's why even the members are starting to come out and they are, and then we are starting to do the, a lot of casting and binding. You know, why cast and bind is like a pot that is already broken. Take this one where they put your water inside. Then when you've taken your water and you are fine, you can go back and see how to mend this other pot. APC and PDP, the devil has found a resting place in them, in my opinion. So Nigerians have, are unanimous. They say no APC, no PDP. And but, I, but not I all Nigerians, like, you know, not not all Nigerians. It's, it's not generally. Entirely. No, no, you know, when I was when I was in the primary school, they used to tell me that plants are green. 
But I've come to realize that some plants are red, some plants are yellow, some flowers are pink, okay? But they say plants. So that, that was actually a generalized statement which I need to actually withdraw and rephrase that the generality of, the, of Nigerians are unanimous that they don't want APC, they don't want PDP, they want something new and fresh. Mm. Like ADC. Oh, well, I mean, because I, I, we know that there are no, you know, uh, there are no absolutes. They're just relative. You can't really have that's right, that's everyone, right, you know, to right. the other side. But quickly... Because I have some amazing friends in APC and PDP. Lovely people. Mr. Donald Duke is one of my all-time great friends. He's still in one of those parties, you know. So they are nice, wonderful people in those two parties. It's just that they've lost the plot. Well, niceness and, you know, greatness has not translated into uh, economic development and growth and security of lives and property. And that's what Nigerians Thank are concerned you. about. But quickly, you Thank have um, the Guardian newspaper here. Nationwide blackout, a three billion naira loss to TCN strike as a greed crash. It's eight o'clock. Uh, so the greed has actually crashed and because of the strike that was embarked on by the Nigerian electricity workers for their welfare concern that was not, um, you know, respected from 2019 up until this moment. What are your thoughts? I mean, three billion naira lost in how many hours, in how many days? Yeah, um, I think it's actually a lot more than that because... Um, we have not sat down to do the cost analysis between the per kilowatt cost of, 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 of power that we pay for from uh, PHCN and that of diesel. Now, when you do that analysis, you discover that the differential for running an hour of generator is humongous. Not to talk of when they... So you kind of try to balance out between the hours that you get from PHC and the hours that you run your generator, the hours that you should shut down and have no operations because if you run those hours, the returns on the investment is not really wise. So when you now have the problem, you have to shut down and then the ones you have to use your generator... Then this last one that you enjoy a little bit from PHC and they now shut it down again, it means you are 100% on your generator, on your shutdown. And the things you lose, to me, will be multiples of the three billion they've just said. Now, coming back, why did the PHC and have this, um, why did the, the electricity workers have this shutdown? Some, some reasons are, 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 are frivolous. They just don't make sense. If you say, go for promotion exams for you to get promoted, promotion should not be a right. Obey that law. But on the other hand, they make simple demands. And these people just slip over those. You know, people don't really take things serious. An important memo comes. The least you can do is attend to that memo with a clear head. What are they saying? They are making a legitimate demand but we don't have the capacity. What do you do? You call them to sit down and reason with them and possibly meet them halfway or something or give them hope, if nothing else. But you just ignore them as if they are non-entities. And then they now sit down and say, look, you know, Nigerians, you do not get what you want except you apply some level of force one way or the other. As a result, they embark on strike. Then 24 hours, you know, rush to have a meeting that you could have just resolved very easily. I think that we Nigerians need to start to think of the people that we send into offices. I, keep, I can't say this enough. The eye on the ball is 2023, and for you to recruit the sort of people that will sit down and work. Don't look at how much money has. Oh, Tinubu has so much money, or Atiku has so much. No, we are just... Talking of somebody, you, your boss, let me end on, on this. A boss is to take your children to from Uyo to Abuja for an excursion. And you as a parent, I expect two things you should look at. The integrity of the boss and the competence of the driver. These two things. Now, instead of looking at the integrity of the boss, you are looking at how, oh, it's air-conditioned, oh, it's looking good, and this and that. What is the engine like? No. Then, oh, the driver, his father is a, child, is a paramount ruler, his uncle is the governor. You are looking at everything but the thing that matters. 
What is the competence of the man that wants to drive your children? Five of them are going, the only five you have, are going on excursion from Uyo to Abuja. And you are telling me of how rich the, the, the driver is and how, how wealthy the, the, the sister is a Nollywood actress. Are you okay? Please don't tell me about how much money these people have. Money does not run government. Tell me what is between their ears. Tell me their competence, their capacity, their character, their capability. Those should be the conversation today. Because even the media sometimes, they just do analysis on, oh, the man has capacity, oh, the man. Capacity to do what? That is why, what I call relevant experience. We need to enlighten Nigerians that there's a difference between a monarch and a CEO. A monarch is a lord that sits, he's an all bad that is worshipped, but the CEO is an otumba of some sort, somebody who is coming to get the work done. And the moment our mindset is channeled in the right direction, we'll start to do a proper profiling of the sort of person that should be our governor or our president. Ezekiel okay, Yaito, yeah, quickly, on the Daily Trust newspaper, uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's still related to the past sector. N Niger Republic, uh, Bene Togo owes Nigeria or owe Nigeria 5.8 billion naira for power that was supplied or given to them in 2020. This is according to report. And this is not really the first time we've had countries who are owing Nigeria. I mean, so for services rendered. But I I'd like to ask you, reacting to that, we're being owed this amount of money and we're saying that we don't have resources. Uh, if we look at, you know, all of that for different uh, projects that we probably would have embarked on or different things that would have done, for instance, the educational sector. Uh, on the other hand, do you think that this ideology of you not having power to cater for your needs as a country, uh, it's okay for you to go ahead and supply power to other countries? They say charity begins at home. Do you think that this is really a good, brilliant idea? Because uh, what's the rationale behind supplying power to other countries? when you're not able, you know, to boast of power supply in your own country. Let me shock Constant you. Constant power supply, by the way. Let me shock you. It's a smart move. Why do I say so? They have not explained to Nigerians some of the dynamics that apply in the power sector. They have not. That there are two bodies... One for power generation and the second for power distribution. They have not told Nigerians that a lot of times the generated power is not evacuated, is not collected by those who do the distribution because those who do the distribution have to pay for what they collect and they feel that they would rather manage the system that they have, especially when they were doing this estimated billing, which is why every house is not metered. Whether they give you power or they don't give you power, they collect money from you. Isn't it just cool business by their estimation that you collect money when you are not buying? Why would you want to buy when you can collect money without rendering the service, without paying for, for, for the, or buying the stuff. So a lot of times, let them come out and tell you that a lot of times power is generated but not evacuated. As a media house, please find out if what I've just said is true or not. And look at the second company that generates the power. If they generate this power and it is not evacuated, it is useless to them. So it's smart thinking to say, can we give it to who, who is willing to buy from us? Okay. And secondly, they have not told you how much we buy in, in Nigeria and how much they sell to others. Thirdly, they've not told you how much money they've collected so far, but they are only telling you how much they are being owed. Where in the budget do we have the subhead that shows where the money is collected? I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Don't get me wrong. The ones I know, I'll tell you. I'm saying that I've not seen it, but they need to tell us where it is reflected in the budget so that I can go and confirm. But what I can tell you for a fact, on my honor, is that 
there is power generated but not evacuated because those who collect the power to distribute don't want to pay and collect when they can well, collect to... money from you for not giving you power by process called estimated billing. And tell me why it is almost impossible. You need to beg for is you to called? have a meter in your house. Mm. These are the things that Nigerians need to come to know because our government is not telling us the truth. Well, Ezekiel Yanitik, I would really love to have this conversation with you some other time about the power that's generated and the power that's evacuated. Uh, the question would be, the power that's generated, what are we generating? How much have we generated, really? Are we generating enough? Is it up to 12,000 megawatts? Or we just say that we're generating 4,000 or 3,000? I don't hope that you answer this one because we're out of time. But thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. Uh, we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts and great insights that you have brought in today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Always a privilege. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's the size on Off the Press. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here. It's okay. Nigeria has been listed among countries that are, can actually, you know, uh, trade freely without any... Uh, restrictions whatsoever. We'll see what this means for us as a country. Stay with us. <laughs>